This video will walk you through the disassembly and reassembly of the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio 2. Before you begin, make sure your device is powered off and disconnected from the power supply, and your battery is completely discharged. Ensure that your work surface is covered with an ESD-safe non-marring material and that it's clean and clear of any debris or abrasive particles. Equip an anti-static wrist strap and refer to the Microsoft Service Guide to put the device into display replacement mode. With the display closed, flip the laptop over so that the non-skid feet are facing up. Insert a spudger at the end of the foot pad and slide it under the foot until you can grab it with your fingers. Peel up and remove the foot. Repeat this procedure for the second foot pad. Use a 3IP Torx Plus screwdriver to remove the seven screws from the foot recesses. The chassis is secured near the hinges by cosmetic plate adhesive. Insert the point of a spudger under the cosmetic plate near one of the hinges, and slide the spudger to detach both of the short sections of the cosmetic plate near the back. Use a metric ruler and permanent marker to make a 13mm mark on an opening pick. And then while securing the main body of the laptop with one hand, lift the back edge of the chassis to disengage the magnets that secure it. Insert the marked opening pick under the chassis near one of the bottom corners, and slide it around the corner so that it's under the front edge of the chassis. Make sure never to insert the pick more than the marked 13 millimeters. Keep sliding the pick around the perimeter until you encounter more cosmetic plate adhesive in the middle third of the chassis's front edge. Using two hands, lift the front edge of the chassis and rotate it to lay flat on the work surface, making sure not to strain the battery's cable. Removing the RSSD disconnects the battery and should be done before all repairs. To remove the RSSD, use the 3IP Torx Plus driver to remove the two screws securing the RSSD bracket. The RSSD will pop up at a slight angle once the screws are removed. Grip the RSSD bracket with your fingers and slide it straight out of its socket. We can now disconnect the battery. While making sure not to touch or press on the battery, firmly pull the battery connector up straight to release the clips on either side of the connector, and then pull the connector towards the battery to disengage it. Remove the chassis and place it battery facing up on a clean surface, making sure that the battery cannot be damaged during storage. Inspect the battery for damage. If it shows any of the signs below, the battery and chassis must be replaced. Check for evidence of leaking, dents, swelling, surface scratches that have exposed aluminum, damaged wires, discoloration, or corrosion, both visual signs or a smell like acetone. Using a 3IP Torque Plus driver, remove the two screws securing the right cable tensioner, and then use the point of a spudger to slide the tensioner from underneath the motherboard. Repeat this process for the left cable tensioner. Unlatch the display cable buckle, and then use your finger to slide the display cable straight out of its connector. Repeat this process for the three remaining display cables. Use a 6IP Torx Plus driver to loosen all eight of the hinge screws about an eighth of a turn. And then open the keyboard assembly to a 90 degree angle. Remove all four of the left hinge screws and then place a light duty spring clamp onto the hinge to hold it in place against the keyboard assembly. Next, remove the four screws from the right hinge. While holding the keyboard assembly in place, remove the spring clamp from the right hinge and then lift the keyboard assembly away from the display. Using a 3IP Torx Plus driver, remove the two screws securing the microSD slot bracket. Remove the bracket and then use the spudger to disconnect the microSD slot press connector. Using a spudger, lift the left tweeter connector out of its socket and then slide the cable out of the way of the microSD slot. Remove the two 3IP Torx Plus screws securing the microSD slot and then grab the slot by its cable and lift it to the right to remove it. The right I.O. bracket is secured by four 3IP Torx Plus screws. Remove those and then lift the bracket out. Remove the three 3IP Torx Plus screws securing the USB bracket and then lift it out. Using a spudger, disconnect the USB A and C ports cable and then remove the four 3IP Torx Plus screws securing the ports. Gently grab the ports by their cable and lift the ports out. Using your spudger, disconnect the lower USB C ports cable from its connector and then remove the two 3IP Torx Plus screws securing it. Grab the lower USB C port by its cable and lift it out. There are three 3IP Torx Plus screws securing the left I.O. bracket. Remove those and then lift the bracket out. Remove the two 3IP Torx Plus screws from the Surface Connect port bracket and then lift the bracket out. 
Use your spudger to disconnect the Surface Connect port from the motherboard and then remove the two 3IP Torx Plus screws securing the port. Lift the port out to remove it. Use your spudger to flip the hinged locking flap on the audio jack ZIF connector and then use some tweezers to pull the cable out of its socket using its plastic pull tab. Remove the two 3IP Torx Plus screws securing the audio jack and then lift the audio jack out using a spudger. Use your spudger to disconnect the remaining left speaker cable, and then unlock the fan cable's ZIF connector. Grab the fan cable by its plastic pull tab using some tweezers, and then pull it straight out of its connector. Unlock and disconnect the trackpad cable, the keyboard cable, and the backlight cable. Next, pry up to disconnect the wireless pin charger cable, unlock and disconnect the second fan's cable, and lastly, use your spudger to disconnect the two right speaker cables. Remove the tape securing the fan and speaker cables, and then use a 3IP Torx Plus driver to remove the two screws securing the fans. Lift both fans out. Remove the three screws in each speaker, and lift them out. And then remove the 16 screws securing the motherboard. Double check that the motherboard is clear from any cables, and then lift it straight out. To reinstall the motherboard, lower it into place making sure that it's clear from any cables or connectors. Reinstall the 16 3IP Torx Plus screws, noting that two of the screws at the bottom are slightly smaller than the rest of the screws. Reinsert both the left and right speakers, making sure they fit over their alignment posts, and then secure each of them with three 3IP Torx Plus screws. Install grommets on the fan posts, and then install the left and right fans, securing them each with a 3IP Torx Plus screw. Secure the fan and speaker cables with some tape, and then reconnect the left speaker, fan, wireless pen charger, backlight, keyboard, trackpad, right fan, and right speaker cables. Insert the audio jack at a downward angle into its recess, and then secure it with two 3IP Torx Plus screws. Reconnect its cable and lock it into place. Insert the Surface Connect port into its recess, and then align its screw post over the holes. Secure it with two 3IP Torx Plus screws, and then connect its cable to the motherboard. Reinstall the Surface Connect port bracket securing it with two 3IP Torx Plus screws, and then set the left I.O. bracket into place and secure it with three 3IP Torx Plus screws. Install the lower USB-C port at a slight downward angle so the bent part of the cable goes underneath the motherboard. Secure it with two 3IP Torx Plus screws and press its connector into place on the motherboard. Slide the USB-A and C ports into place at a slight downward angle, making sure the curved part of the cable slides underneath the motherboard, and then secure the ports with four 3IP Torx Plus screws. Connect the ports cable to the motherboard and then install the USB bracket securing it with three 3IP Torx Plus screws. Set the right I.O. bracket into place, and secure it with 3IP Torx Plus screws. While the left tweeter cable is out of the way, slide the micro SD slot into place, and secure it with two 3IP Torx Plus screws. Reconnect the left tweeter cable and the micro SD slots cable to the motherboard, and then lay the micro SD slot bracket into place, and secure it with two 3IP Torx Plus screws. Remove the existing display cable foam pads, and clean the area with some isopropyl alcohol to clean off any adhesive residue. Then, reinstall new display cable foam pads. Lay the display screen side up on your work surface, and place the hinges at a 90 degree angle. While making sure the keyboard assembly does not make contact with the display, slide it into place securing the left hinge with a light duty spring clamp. Reinstall the four 6IP Torx screws securing the right hinge, and then after removing the spring clamp from the left hinge, install the four 6IP Torx screws securing the left hinge. Close the device, and loosen the hinge screws a quarter of a turn. Align the back edge until it's flush across the hinge and keyboard surfaces, and then check that a 0.2mm feeler gauge can slide easily in the hinge gaps. 
Once aligned, tighten one screw on each hinge, and then repeat the alignment process three more times to tighten all the hinge screws. Use an opening pick to gently slide all four display cables under the motherboard, and then connect the cables to the motherboard, locking them in place. Slide both cable tensioners into place until their screw holes align with their posts, and then secure them each with two 3IP Torx Plus screws. Check the pin shim on the bottom edge of the keyboard assembly for damage. If you find any damage, remove and replace it. Place the chassis so that its battery cable can reach its connector, and then insert the battery connector at a downward angle so that the hooks go completely under their notches on the bottom edge, and then push down firmly on both sides of the connector so that both clips snap into place. Remove the RSSD thermal pad and clean the area with some isopropyl alcohol to remove any residue, and then install a new thermal pad. Slide the RSSD into its socket and then secure its bracket with two 3IP Torx Plus screws. Inspect the chassis and keyboard assembly for any loose items, paying special attention to the following areas. Underneath the motherboard and around its perimeter. The battery recess. Any area with magnets, including the perimeter of the keyboard assembly, the center of the keyboard assembly near the top edge of the trackpad, and the left and right edges of the chassis underside. Flip the chassis with both hands and lay it over the keyboard assembly, and then carefully flip the device over. Plug the device in and power it on. Consult the Microsoft Service Guide and run the Microsoft Surface Diagnostics appropriate for your repair. Power off the device, disconnect it from power, and then flip it back over. Check the perimeter of the cosmetic plate to make sure there are no gaps or overhangs, and then use a 0.4mm feeler gauge to make sure all the edges of the cosmetic plate have an even gap. Reinstall the seven screws securing the chassis. Use the spudger to remove any chunks of adhesive left in the non-skid feet recesses and clean off any residue with some isopropyl alcohol. Reinstall new non-skid feet, making sure to insert the right and left alignment pegs in their holes. Place a ruler on the top of each newly installed foot and press down for 30 seconds to adhere it. 